Last week, two African-American men were arrested in a downtown Philadelphia Starbucks. Amna Nawaz looks at how the Seattle-based coffee chain is struggling to address the resulting outcry on social media and elsewhere. And that outcry built to a crowd of protesters at that particular Starbucks today, unmoved by CEO Kevin Johnson's apologies and call for unconscious bias training for employees. All this after video of last Thursday's incident went viral. The clip shows police officers confronting two black men seated inside the Starbucks as they wait for a third guest. The store manager reportedly called police after the men asked to use the bathroom without buying anything first. Minutes of calm conversation follow. Police officers eventually handcuff both men and force them to leave. A Starbucks Kevin Johnson today called the arrests reprehensible, apologized to the men, and vowed to make sure this does not happen again. For more on this, I'm joined by Philadelphia City Councilman Kenyatta Johnson, who represents the district in which this Starbucks is located. Councilman Johnson, thank you for your time and welcome. I want to begin by asking you now, since you have met with a number of people involved in this incident, why do you believe that it ended up in this way? Well, you know, first and foremost, um, being the council person in the second councilmanic district, which is a very diverse district, uh, but we also represent the Starbucks in my district, uh, I want to make sure as a council person that no form of racial bias or racial profiling um, is accepted. And so um, we called a press conference today to address this issue and to denounce the recent arrest of the two African-American young men um, who were arrested after waiting while being black in the Starbucks cafe. And as we move forward, we want to make sure that Starbucks have come up with a plan to specifically address the issue of um, diversity and inclusion, as well as um, addressing the issue of racial awareness when it comes to how their business operates. Uh, Councilman, you've now spoken to a number of people involved. You've seen a lot more than most of us who've only seen the video. Yes. Do you believe that these men were the victims of racial bias? Yes, you know, everyone knows that Starbucks brand is you can come there, use their Wi-Fi, and in that environment, you know, have meetings, you know, and, and take a moment and take care of your day-to-day -day business while you're inside their particular store. That's always been a part of their brand. In this particular case, you have two African-American young men. Um, they're not dressed in suits. They're in Rittenhouse Square, which is a um, high-income area in Center City, Philadelphia, and the person who actually called the police, I believe, overreacted uh, when she had the interaction with these young men who said they were waiting for someone to come and meet with them, and that resulted in her calling the cops, which resulted in an unnecessary arrest of the two African-American young men. And so a lot of people in my district are in outrage. A lot of people in my district want answers. But most importantly, they want to make sure we continue to hold Starbucks accountable. Well, let me ask you about that now. The first reaction from Starbucks was a rather tepid apology. The backlash grew. There was then a more robust statement followed by a video statement from the CEO, Kevin Johnson, in which he said this. These two gentlemen did not deserve what happened. And we are accountable. I am accountable. Now, going through this, I'm going to do everything I can to ensure it is fixed and never happens again. Whether that is changes to the policy and the practice, additional store manager training, including training around unconscious bias, and we will address this. Councilman Johnson, are you satisfied with Starbucks response? Not at all. You know, listen, I've worked with several major corporations in a variety of different aspects regarding um, organizing for um, wages for, in the, for low income individuals, and I know how this game works. We need to see more than just lip service. We need an action plan that specifically goes toward racial sensitive training, but also a campaign to let the people here in the city of Philadelphia know that anyone is welcome to come to the Starbucks Cafe without being, without fearing any type of racial or social bias perspective when it comes to individuals hanging out or coming to frequent and patronize their business. It's totally unacceptable. Um, again, people are in outrage, and we have to continue to make sure 
that they aren't just giving an apology. We want an action plan to actually address this issue. You mentioned that the manager who had originally first called the police to the scene, uh, she's now reportedly been removed from the store pending an investigation. Is that the standard to which you as councilman withhold other businesses in your district, that they should remove employees who exhibit any kind of racial bias? Uh, absolutely. I would go even further to say um, if the evidence shows that they ha has exhibited some level of racial bias, they shouldn't be, they should be fired, to be quite frank with you, because at the end of the day, Nobody should feel, in, in, in the year 2018, any form of racial discrimination, regardless of their background, regardless of their lifestyle, and most importantly, regardless of their race. And so and this is totally unacceptable, and Starbucks must be held accountable. And beyond just issuing an apology, beyond just removing the young lady, we need to have an action plan to make sure there's racial sensitivity training for the employees, we need to also make sure that the people of Philadelphia know from a racial awareness campaign from Starbucks that anyone could come to Starbucks and feel welcome without the feeling that they will be kicked out based upon their race, creed, or color. Philadelphia City Councilman Kenyatta Johnson, thanks for your time. Thanks for having me here today.